quiet grips the night The morning of the last sunrise Broken slumber, blinding light Nations tremble at the sight Son of man just split the sky Every saint and every scholar Spend all my time dreaming what the future's gonna bring. And all of this time, there's a world passing by right in front of me. Set my sights on tomorrow. Well, I'm tripping over today. Who says big things are somewhere off in the distance? To the very next heart Shattered and broken To the very next way You're gonna use me Show me the next thing
What if you could go back and relive one day of your life all over again and unmake the mistake that left you a million miles away from the you you once knew? Now yesterday, shame keeps saying that you'll never get back long track. But what if I told you you one step away from surrender? One step. Doesn't matter how far you've gone. Mercy says you don't have to keep it running down the road. You're on. Love's never met a lost cause. Your shame will lay it down. Leave your ghost in the past. Cause you know that you can't go back. But you can turn around. You've never been more than one step away from surrender. Step away, lay down, lay down your old chains. Come now and take up your new name. Your best life up ahead now. You one step away, lay down, lay down your old chains. Come now and take up your new name. Your best life up ahead now. You one step away. Just one step away.
that again. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. It's Pentecost Sunday. We see lots of red, so that uh, is all about the Holy Spirit with us and among us and, and moving in our world today. So we pray for that uh, here with us this morning in our worship together. Just a couple things in your announcements to highlight and lift up for us. Um, call your attention to and let you explore further yourself. But the women's retreat, there's still time to sign up for that in uh, early June. And we're continuing our ministry and, and providing lunch bags for Fir Grove. So that, that continues. Uh, some things with uh, regarding the youth, we're, they're having a eat at Panda Express, which I haven't done in years. So we'll have to see um, whether or not I like it anymore. But um, June 3rd, a little fundraiser for the youth and some of the uh, things coming up this summer. And then a graduation and confirmation Sunday will be June 6th, so in a couple of weeks. We'll have, the, like we did last year, the outdoor graduation. And instead of a drive through this year, it'll be a walk through. So hopefully you can join us for that and honor our graduates. And then that same Sunday, Addison Jensen will be confirmed at, uh, during the worship service that day. And I think there was probably more, but I'll let you figure it out. And Ari wanted a quick word. Hello, my friends. So we are looking for more singers for our worship team. We're also welcome to some musicians. Whether you play any instrument at all, uh, we would really like you to join us. Even if you play piano, we can do a little feature for you. So you are included as well. If you are interested, please come talk to me at the end of church today um, so we can figure something out. All right, that's all. All righty, thank you. I guess uh, a note on our worship service today and, and a plea for mercy. Uh, Mike Peluso normally is the one entering all the stuff that shows up on the screen. And he was in Florida on a golf course, so he was busy. And um, Shannon is in Wisconsin with her father, so it fell to me to add all the stuff to the screen and and uh, I, I know enough to be dangerous so when we get to the gospel reading and you see that verse 4 has more words than I read just be gentle with me um, I didn't know how to just do the second half of the verse so anyway when we get there um, so it's uh, good to be here together it's good to worship together it's good to see some uh, faces that we haven't seen in a while so Welcome this morning, and I pray God's blessings on us as we worship together. Let's take a moment and, and just gather ourselves, center ourselves, and, and prepare to join in worship. So a moment of silence. And I invite you to stand and join me with our call to worship, which comes from Romans 8, is the inspiration. We are gathered together in the presence of God to offer our praise and our prayers. We come before God with confidence, knowing that even when we can't find the words, God's own spirit is right here with us, praying in us and for us giving shape to our wordless hopes and longings and pleading for us before the throne of grace. So let's come with joy to offer our worship to God who knows and loves us all. Let us pray. Generous God, you are the source of all life, creating and sustaining every living thing. May we be filled with your breath, nourished at your table, renewed by your living water, and sustained by your love. Amen. We sing together.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The prayer of the day. Mighty God, breathe on us the breath of life, your spirit of truth. Transform us by your spirit in us, so that we may proclaim your good news in word and deed. We ask this in the hope of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came down to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Word of God, word of life.
please stand for the hearing of the gospel. Our gospel today is from the 15th chapter of John and then into the 16th chapter. Jesus tells his disciples, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Oh, come on, it's not going to hurt. Look, at we even have a red carpet. This is so cool. Oh, I know, it's so hard. I have candy. Okay, how are you guys doing today? Good? All right. I noticed you guys are way back. All right, so this is going to be interactive service. Could you get that box over there, um, Mira? Uh oh, she says. And could you give me the lighter? Thank you. Okay, you guys each take one of these things. Hopefully it works. Okay. When I tell you, you're going to turn it on and put it over your head, okay? I have a lighter that I'm going to try, but I thought about giving you guys lighters, and it's bad enough giving me one, so let's not go there. All right, so I want to tell you a story. It took place after the resurrection of Jesus. You guys know what the resurrection of Jesus was? What's the resurrection of Jesus? Okay, so he died on a cross, and then three days later, he? He rose from the dead, and the people and his disciples went to pray, but they found an open tomb, and there was nobody in there except Right, exactly. Very good. You could do this. Absolutely. Now, now in Jerusalem, there was this, uh, it was called the Festival of the Weeks or Feast of the Tabernacles. So anyway, there was tons of people in Jerusalem, okay? And they spoke different languages. Now, before Jesus died, he promised to send the disciples a special present that would help them share the good news about the gospel. So the disciples are all in this room, okay? And then all of a sudden, there comes this big rushing sound of wind. Like this, maybe. Of course, of course it works at home, but does not work here. Anyway, it's a rushing sound of wind. Oh, there it is. Let's try it again. Okay, never mind. This is like teaching with Wi-Fi and everything. Okay, never mind. That didn't work. So imagine that there's this big wind, all right? So make, let's make a sound like a wind. I hear no wind from the Mitchells. Okay, anyway, there's this big wind. And then 
there were little bits of fire that appeared, okay? So this is where you put that thing over your head, all right? Can you put that thing over your head? Uh-oh. Nothing is working. So here's the fire over your head, okay? So there's fire going all over the place, and there was that sound of the wind. Oh, here it is now. Let's do it now. That would be kind of freaky if you heard that, huh? That would be weird. All right. Yeah, it would be. So that was totally weird. And now that was, here comes the Holy Spirit. The whole thing is the Holy Spirit. Do you guys know what the Holy Spirit is? Yes. The Spirit of God, right. It's kind of like a go-between uh, that makes all things possible. We have, like when you guys were baptized, all right? Okay. Good job balancing. When you guys were baptized, the pastor said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So um, anyway, the Holy Spirit came to the disciples and appeared as flames above their heads, which you guys still have on your heads. And um, it was pretty awesome, okay? Then an amazing thing happened. The disciples started speaking in other languages. There were people in Jerusalem who taught different, who spoke different languages, but the disciples, even though they didn't know these language, languages, they were able to talk automatically in these languages. They started, okay, guys, the fire's done. Okay, they started uh, sharing stories of Jesus, and some people put them down, but Peter said, they're not drunk or crazy, they're full of God's love. That's what the Holy Spirit is. It, 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 helps us, it helps us make good decisions. It helps us share God's love. So people started, this is when the church was really born. We started, uh, people started sharing Jesus' story and um, showing God's love to other people. So at Pentecost, we celebrate the birthday of the church. It was the start of how we serve God and serve other people. Um, we share God's love, which is pretty awesome. I think God's love is awesome. Uh, he wants us to share his story and his love with the whole world. Now, I have a video, and if it doesn't work, it's only one minute. If it doesn't work, it's my fault. I thought it was pretty awesome. Watch this. So they all speak different languages, but they're all saying the same thing. They're all saying the Lord's Prayer. Now, I don't understand German or Norwegian, which would make my mother totally mad, but um, they're all saying the Lord's Prayer. And as Christians, we speak different languages, but we all share God's love, and that's what we should do. All right, so let us say a prayer, and then uh, you can grab a piece of candy. Dear God, thank you for the church. I'm glad I'm part of your family. Help me to share your love and tell others about Jesus. We love you, God. Thanks for loving us. Amen. Thanks, guys.
Thank you, Sandy. Seeing all the different people praying the Lord's Prayer in different languages, I think, uh, at least for me, kind of expands our idea of the church and, and gives hope, right, that we can see beyond ourselves and, and see how God's kingdom is expanding throughout the world. Um, certainly is a cause for hope. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So Wednesday morning at our, our Bible study, the question was or, to think of your favorite sounds. What are your favorite sounds? So, which, by the way, if anybody would like to join us, we meet on Zoom, 7 a.m. It's really not that bad. You've been up for a couple hours anyway, right? So, um, yeah, come join us. So anyway, think of your favorite sounds was the question. And things that came to mind were like ocean waves. Um, I think Anne would say one of her favorite sounds is the sounds of birds chirping. Um, I thought maybe popcorn might be somebody's favorite sound, depending on your craving, I guess, at the moment. And the, the point of asking that quest question was the invitation to listen to think of our favorite sounds and then to, to be able to listen, not just to those favorite sounds, but to all sounds, to take the time and, and to pay attention, to listen what's going on around us. And when we do listen, the question is, what will we hear? Now, our favorite sounds give us a positive feeling, they lift our spirits, and we associate them with, with fond memories. One of my favorite sounds is the sound of a train on, running on its, on its tracks. And for me, that's an association with opportunities I've had to travel in Europe when we went by train. And so I have that, that positive association and, and think back on, especially like sometimes the train would run through the night and we'd be in a sleeper car. And, and so just really fond memories and certainly traveling by train is, is different from what we generally experience here. So that's one of my favorite sounds. Uh, talking with a friend of Mike's the other day, he shared how recently he had been in Germany and he, he's actually German, he had ridden a train from Germany to Poland which retraced the steps that his father took back in World War II when he was going to the battle to fight with the Soviet Union and where he was eventually killed, his father. And so for him, I'm sure the sound of a train has a much different association, much different than mine, probably not one of his favorite sounds. But I think maybe it's still an invitation to listen. And again, if we listen, what will we hear? Now we've just spent the past six months after Easter in first, or six months, six weeks following Easter in First John. And as we listened to 1 John, what we heard was that no one has ever seen God, but the, the one and only Son who is himself God has made God known. So we can't see God, but Jesus is God revealed. In Jesus, we come to know God. That is, we know God's character. We know what is important to God. And as you think about I invite you to think about that as you think about Jesus' ministry, what stories from the Gospels come to mind? If you think about Jesus and his life, what comes to mind? Most of the stories are about Jesus healing people, those who are sick and, or blind, those who have leprosy or demons. Jesus feeds multitudes of people, right? He forgives sins. Jesus' ministry and his life crossed boundaries, the boundaries of ethnicity and, and status, of, of wealth and poverty, things like that. And, and then Jesus' story culminates in the cross. And so as we listen to this story of Jesus, we hear about God. We hear about God's character, what, what his character is like. We hear who God is. Jesus makes God known. Then we have the gospel reading today on this Pentecost Sunday. And Jesus says, when the advocate comes, he will testify to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth. He will, he will testify about me. 
And then Jesus says, unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. So God's presence for us is kind of a tag team, tag team presence. Jesus says, but if I go, I will send him to you. And when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. An advocate is someone who stands up, like in a courtroom, stands up to give evidence. They are a witness. And so as we hear the evidence, we are persuaded and we come to believe. Just as, as Jesus makes God known in the world, the Holy Spirit does the same thing today, continues to reveal God to us. The advocate is the witness to us of God and of God's character. And the Spirit will guide us into all truth, will guide us in the truth about who Jesus is. So as we listen to this advocate, to this Holy Spirit, to God's Spirit, we hear the truth. The invitation is then to believe what we hear. Jesus said when the Holy Spirit, when the advocate comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and about righteousness and about judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father and about judgment, because the prince of the world now stands condemned. Sin and righteousness and judgment are all about believing in Jesus as the Son of God and as the Savior of the world. When we think about sin and righteousness, we have a very different um, concept and perspective. We're mired in our own do's and don'ts, and typically the do's and don'ts of others, and we don't seem very Christian as we as we concentrate and as we focus on those. That's our concept of sin and righteousness and judgment. But the beginning, the middle, and the end is Jesus, who he is and what he has done. To believe in Jesus that he is actually God. God come to us, the incarnation, God's presence, God with us. To believe in God's character as healer and provider, as as merciful and gracious, gracious as, as love and community and relationship. To believe the implications for what this means for the world and for life. Remember in 1 John, it, it, 1 John stressed, I write these things, this was at, right at the end, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Believing in the Son of God, believing in God's character, believing in forgiveness, mercy, and love. Believing also in eternal life. And then to begin to imagine what that eternal life looks like. To imagine a world where someday a father does not board a train to go into the battle and be killed. To imagine a world where Israel and Hamas will no longer be shooting missiles at each other to imagine a world where the strong will no longer oppress the weak. We believe in Jesus, God with us, who entered our world, stuck in this endless cycle of violence and hatred and oppression. Jesus came to our broken world and among us broken people. And he came as redeemer and healer, as one who forgives. And he has broken this endless cycle and given us a new way to live. We believe in Jesus' suffering and death was to bring us into relationship with God and also to create a new community and a new way to live. A new way to live where the forgiveness and the mercy and the, the restoration that we have received, we are able to extend to others. These become our way of life, the way we live together. And we can begin to live today in this vision and with this hope this hope of eternal life. Easter celebrates this world-changing event, and, and we are invited to imagine this world coming into being that is being renewed and reborn, and reborn even today, where every tear will be wiped away and, and, and crying and pain will be no more, where there will be no more war and no more drug abuse and no more domestic violence or homelessness. Jesus says the advocate will testify these things about me, that Jesus has given us new life by his death and his resurrection. And as we listen to the Holy Spirit and as we come to believe, this creates in us this vision and inspires hope in us. 
as we imagine this life and as our believing creates this, this new life and inspires hope, our lives are an expression of, they remember the definition of embody from last week, our lives are an expression of and a tangible and a, and a visible witness to the hope that we have. We embody the life Jesus has given us. Remember what 1 John also said, that no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And so as we listen, our lives, as we listen to our lives and as we listen to the world, there is much to hear. There are our favorite sounds, but there are also sounds of grief and pain, of anger and hatred. We who believe in Jesus, God with us, the savior of the world, we are invited to hear and to speak a new word, a word of life and of love and of new creation. Amen. Please stand as we sing together Spirit of Gentleness.
recognize the story of the Bible in those verses and, and the story of God's salvation, and particularly the, the last verse that called us to look ahead and to imagine the eternal life that God has given us. So as we imagine that life and, and seek to live into it, we turn to God with our prayers. So alive in the risen Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we now bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and to answer us in steadfast love. Let us pray. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit as the advocate for your church, testifying to us of the hope we have in Jesus. Give us ears to listen to your spirit among us. In the church throughout the world, strengthen our vision and imagination so that we live in hope for the day your salvation is fully realized. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, your mighty works are too num numerous to count, and the earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and feed them, and give them all they need for abundant life. Send the breath of your spirit over the face of the earth and give life anew. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages, proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Send your Holy Spirit among the nations again today, especially where there is strife and violence, including Israel and Palestine, and may your spirit bring peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in, dis in distress. We pray especially for Leah Peterson and her family at the death of Brian. We pray for Steve Olson and Rochelle and her mom. We pray for Krista, for Shannon's father, Richard, for Barb Gore and her family at the death of Steve. We pray for those ill with COVID, especially Barbara, a friend of Jan's. We continue to pray for Doug and Debbie Oakman for a diagnosis and for peace and comfort and strength for them both. And for Judy's niece and Stephanie, for Michelle and Don Sticka. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, Fill this pilgrim congregation with your spirit. Renew our ministries. Help us to see each other with the eyes of care and compassion. And open us to the needs of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-failing love and your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding be with you always. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise and that we should at all times and in all places do so. Through your Savior Jesus Christ, you fulfill the promises of your resurrection. You pour out the fire of your spirit, unite into one body, every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, and with the whole church today and down through the ages, we praise your name. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
Christ has set this table and has provided this meal. There is a place for you. Come and be fed with the bread of life in the cup of salvation. You may be seated and I invite you to come forward and to receive this, this bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus.
Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world as you do. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending song today is Across the Lands by the British composers Stuart Townend and Keith Getty. It's become kind of a favorite of ours. It's a little bit Celtic, and we're thinking maybe we teach you the chorus here. So the chorus is... sing that four times because we're going to sing it after every verse and we're going to double it at the end. So by that last time, hopefully you'll be all over it. You're the author 
here this morning. It's good to worship together. Thank you as well to our musicians for leading us in our worship, all the usual suspects, and also Katie Orsi this morning. So thank you, Katie. Go in God's peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. 